Hi, my name is Julia Silkey and I am a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today in this video, we're going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set about um, the office, the, the television series, the office. And we're going to um, predict IMDB ratings for the office using other characteristics about um, the, um, the episodes. So um, we're going to use lasso regression for this. And um, you may have seen a a, um, um, a video by my friend and collaborator uh, Dave uh, showing an approach about how to do this and I recommend that you watch it it's fantastic and this video is going is similar in spirit um, but shows how to use tidy models to train this model how to tune lasso regression and how to um, use uh, workflows tidy models workflows which is an object that uh, has convenience functions for um, uh, your modeling workflows um, amazingly enough so let's get started. Here we are. Let's start <clears throat> working on this analysis of um, predicting the IMDb ratings of episodes of The Office. So um, here we go. Let's get the let's get this data in. So we're working with two data sets today, and um, this one comes. This one has the um, the actual ratings in it. The IMDb ratings as season, episode, title, and IMDb rating. And the other one we're working with has um, is from the package, um, the uh, the Shroot, and it has this data set in it called the Office. And um, I, I'm gonna I want to join these up because this one has information I want to use um, to predict the IMDb rating. Let this, so this one has the ratings, and this one has the information I want to predict for the ratings. It has things like um, uh, characters, uh, writers, directors. Um, unfortunately, uh, it does not um, uh, use the same information about the um, episodes in the same way. Uh, the I, I checked this out ahead of time, and. Um, and, and also, you can check out my collaborator Dave's similar video to see him work through this with some exploratory data analysis. But the seasons and the episodes um, are not counted in the same ways. And also, the titles are not... Um, are not uh, are not they're not they don't are not all the titles are used the same. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of work here to get these to join up. And it's uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna set up a regular expression. So um, I'm gonna use um, punctuation like this, and this is the or sign. Uh, whoops, not that. Um, I'm gonna use uh, digits, and then the or sign. I'm gonna say parts and part because um, uh, some, uh, some episodes are parts one and two, and some of them are part one, and then the next one is part two. And I'm gonna say the, because some of these I checked out and some of them include the word the and some of them don't. And then finally and, because some of them have a ampersand and some of them have it um, written out and. So um, here's what I'm gonna do. So the, for this ratings raw, I am going to take it and then I'm gonna ch use transmute, and I'm gonna take um, I'm gonna take season episode. Um, actually, am I even gonna use that? Maybe I don't even need that. You know what? I don't need season and episode. I'm just gonna start episode name, episode name, name, and I am gonna use that from this thing called title. So I'm gonna use string to lower with title. Um, and then I'm going to, after that, I'm going to uh, say string remove all with uh, from episode name. And what I'm gonna remove is that regex. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take all that stuff out. Punctuation, digits, parts, part, the, and. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is that leaves some, uh, that leaves some, um, uh, spaces at the beginning of and ends of some of the um, some of the um, uh, titles. So I'm going to trim so that removes uh, space at the beginning and the end, like that. And then I am DB rating like so. So this is what I'm going to take from ratings raw. Whoops! Oh, I gotta, I gotta. 
I gotta actually make the regex here. So here's what we've got. So I've got the episode name and the IMDB rating. So let's call this office ratings, like so. So let's run that. And then for the office, um, let us do, let us do something similar. Um, I don't want those as characters, I don't think. I think I want them as numbers so that I can um, do some modeling with it as numbers. I'm gonna tr I wanna treat it as numbers, not um, characters. And then I'm gonna do all this same stuff, except what we, yeah, we except it's called episode name, not title. And then, um, yep, so that's all the mutating. And then I need to get the stuff I'm interested in. Season, episode, Episode name, uh, typing is hard. Um, and then the director, the writer, and the character, like so. Let's call this office info. There we go. Okay, so these are gonna be my two data sets. Let's just run that whole thing one more time. Okay, so office ratings, office info, there we go. And let's, um, let us, uh, office ratings. Let's get the, um, the, um, ep uh, episodes and let's, um, see what we don't have from the other one. What did we not, what did we, not, what are we going to miss out on? Um, what did I not, uh, manage to, with that, wh what did I not manage to um, match up after that messing around with the um, regular expressions and whatnot? Um, okay, so these three, these after all that, uh, with these three episodes are the ones that don't match up. This one's misspelled. This one is called cover up versus cover. And this one, I think it w originally had a star in this one. It was called sex ed. And this one, it, the title had a star in it. So I'm not going to worry about those where, I mean, we could, we could hand craft matching those up, but I'm, I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep going. And okay, so now it's time to think about building a data set for modeling. So I am going to um, uh, do things uh, similarly, but a little differently to um, the video I mentioned um, uh, by my friend and collaborator, Dave. Um, and I am going to, um, what, something I'm going to do similarly is handling um, the characters. So um, this this data set from the Shroot, from the Shroot package um, is organized by line, by spoken line. And so we, what I'm gonna do from there is I'm going to, um, I am going to uh, count up how many times each character, how many lines each character had per episode. Um, so let, so I'll, let's just do that, count episode name, episode name, character, like so. So now we say, okay, so for each uh, episode name, um, how, many how many lines does each person have? So sometimes you can see it's people together um, and it, you know, it varies here. So I don't want, I don't want to keep all of these people. Um, um, so let's uh, see how many times each character speaks entirely in the whole series as a whole. So Annie and Michael speak together one time. Um, Dwight has, you know, almost 7,000 lines. Creed is at about 400. So let's see. I'm going to filter. Uh, let's see. Um, let's try 500. And then I don't need that column anymore. And then I'm going to use pivot wider here and to, to make a wide version. This right now, this data, the frame is long and skinny and I want to make a wide version. So I'm gonna say names from, where do the names of the columns come from? They come from that character um, column. Where do the values come from? The values come from N, the N 
uh, column. And um, if any of those columns uh, don't have, a, uh, if, if they don't exist, what should I fill it in with? I want to fill it in with zero because that means that that character did not have any lines in that, um, in that, um, uh, in that episode. So for example, Andy did not speak in the, sh in the episode Alliance or the episode Basketball. Um, uh, this is, this is too many. Let's try, um, I don't want to model that many. So let's try it. What if I do 800? I like that. That looks better. Let's call this the characters, um, um, data set. Now I want to do the same thing or make a, the same kind of data set, but for, uh, where, where did it go? Um, the, the, the shows, the people involved in the creation of the show, the writers and the directors. Um, but I, I want to do that, um, with those two people together. I, like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to model the director and the writer separately. Just, I just want to call it one kind of person. So first let's, um, let's do a distinct. So for example, um, Greg Daniels both wrote and directed basketball and I just want to count him one time. Um, I, um, I'm not, I, I, you know, maybe it would be interesting to find out if someone has an impact more as a writer or a director, but I want to build a simpler model where I just count the impact of people one time when they are involved in as a creator of the show as a writer or a director. So here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to pivot longer, meaning I'm going to make a tidy data set. I'm going to do some munging and data handling. And then after that, I'm going to pivot wider to make a data set that's like this shape for modeling. That's a really common workflow for me when I'm in this um, data reshaping uh, state of a part of a data analysis. So first pivot longer. Um, so I, the, what, what columns do I want to pivot longer? Um, director and to writer. Those are the two that I want. And uh, what do I want to call the, um, what do I want to call the um, new column? Let's call it role. And then um, what do I want to call the new values column? Let's call it person. So this gives me a, um, instead of this with director, writer, now I have role, director, writer, director, writer, and person where all the people are. Um, now the people are um, squashed together sometimes with these semicolons, but tidyr has a really nice um, function called separate rows where you say, okay, which column has data like that squashed together and what squashes them together? And I want to separate it out. So instead of having um, this uh, shape together, now I have it separated out into tidy data, one observation per row. Um, again, like I did up there, like and for the characters, I don't want to keep all of these. That would be too many. Some some of these folks only were involved in one um, in one um, or two of these episodes. So let's say I only want to keep writers or directors who are involved in at least ten episodes. And now here is the part where I I keep I only keep people. I only keep people one time if they were involved in an episode. I don't, I don't care if they were a director or a writer. I only keep them one time. So a basketball, Greg Daniels is only there one, one time. Um, so that's the part where I'm combining roles. And now, now it's time to uh, make this into a wide shape so that I can use it for modeling. So the first step here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a value so that I can have something in the, in the spots when I uh, reshape. And then it's time for the actual reshaping. So I'm going to pivot wider. So the names from uh, is person. Whoa, names from person. The um, values from is person value. And then again, just like before, values fill is um, person value equals zero because um, uh, not all of the people are in all of the episodes. Okay, so let's call this creators. 
So, and now let's um, start putting this all together. So let's take the office info, let's remember what's in there. Office info, and let's distinct and keep season, episode, episode name. And now let's interjoin with the characters data set, interjoin with the creators data set, and then interjoin with the office ratings data set. What does that get us? Characters. Oh, I didn't run all that. There we go. Okay. So now this is going to be, and let's uh, let's clean up those names like so. Okay, this is going to be our, um, our data set for modeling office like this. So we've got, um, uh, so episode name, this is like an ID column for us. We've got what season things are in, what episode. Um, Andy, remember he's not in the early, he's not in the early seasons. And then we have how many lines people spoke, different characters spoke. And then we have um, uh, directors and writers and whether they were involved. And then this is going to be the thing we predict, the IMDB rating. That's the outcome that we predict. Um, I encourage you to check out um, uh, lots of the wonderful exploratory data analyses, including um, the video I mentioned by um, Dave, because he does some wonderful um, exploratory work showing like what's in this data set. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, real quick make one um, uh, uh, plot here. For example, um, uh, first let's say season IMDB rating um, and fill as, I mean, I think we, I think we probably all know <laughs> what this is gonna be. Um, like, do, like do we see a, um, an impact with season. Um, uh, so like what were the, oops, let's put in a show legend equals false. Like wh what were the ratings with season? So one, two, three. So like three is very highly rated, rated it goes down and then back up again at the end, especially I bet, but see that the, the variation is high at the end, I bet it's that finale, people love it, right? And then we can also for um, look at episode here. Um, our, our, epi our episodes that are closer to the beginning or the end of uh, a season rated more highly. It looks like things near the end of an episode. I mean, sorry, episodes near the end of a season are rated more highly. Uh, not all episodes have the same number of seasons. So um, uh, that's why this happens here at the end. Um, so things near the end of seasons are rated more highly. So this is what we want to get at. We want to understand what contributes to um, episodes being rated more highly. And if we control for, you know, something like season, do, does writer make a difference? Or is writer and director more important? Um, uh, uh, is, is Jim talking more important than, um, you know, season or whatever? So that's what we want to try to understand with our model. And we are going to use a, um, a lasso regression model. Um, and I'm gonna show how to do that using um, the tidy models framework. So let's load um, tidy models here. And after we load tidy models, let's set up our uh, test strain split. So we're gonna take that, that office and let's stratify by season so that we have about the same proportion of different, um, we have about the same proportion of um, uh, uh, episodes from different seasons in the test and the train. Um, so office train will be that, we'll use the training function on the split and then office test, we'll use the testing function on the split. So let's run that. So office train, whew, 90 rows. This is a very small data set, um, but that's okay. We'll show what we can learn with it, what kind of thing we can learn with it. And the next thing we're gonna do is the, um, the recipe. Recipe. Okay, um, we're gonna use a recipe, and I'm gonna show. I'm gonna talk about two things to do with the recipe. Um, okay, so what do we want to do? We wanna we want to 
uh, predict IMDB rating with uh, everything else. And the data we're going to use is that off that training data, the office train. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is a step we haven't talked about before. Whoops. Um, here. Um, so uh, remember, I have I have in the tr in the data. I have this column episode name, and um, that's like an ID column, and we don't want to use that for pr prediction. Um, that, but we might want to keep that in our data because it could be useful if we would do some analysis afterwards to um, figure out figure out what's going wrong um, or figure out what's you know to be able to understand something about our results. So what do we do if we what don't if we have a variable we don't want to use for prediction but we want to keep it in our data and I like I want to write dot here I don't want to write out like all like all these 30 things you know. So what we will do here is we will write update role update role and the role we want to update is episode name episode name and what we say is we then we give it a new whoops update role that's why sorry update role and we give it a new role and we can put we can put anything here it's just a string um, that's not like predictor or outcome or one of the special roles so I'm gonna call it an ID and so now the recipe knows this is not one of the predictors the next thing that I need to do is um, for all these things that are, everything else is numeric here. Everything else is numeric. So at first I'm going to do um, step ZV for all the numeric um, predictors. So that's um, all numeric minus all outcomes. And then, so I'm going to remove things that have zero variance. That's what that just did. And then I'm going to uh, center and scale. So that's step normalize. We'll center and scale. And I am going to do that. So it is, so la lasso regression um, uh, requires us to center and scale our data before we do it. So we can add that here um, to our recipe. So let's save this as our um, as our 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 recipe. We didn't we haven't done anything with it yet. We've just defined it, and if we then prep it, um, that will um, actually learn it from the data. So we let's call this Office Prep, like this. Now because I have a um, a uh, this right now is a character and uh, prep likes to turn everything to factors and it, it will get pretty confused later um, with this uh, so and it's just a ID it's not one of the predictors but prep will do it anyway so um, so look at look at what I'm doing here we're bringing it back. Strings is factors equals false. We're bringing it back. Okay, so prep here. So our office prep. So the, the reason I did strings is factors equals false here is because I had a string. I had an ID column that was of type string. Okay, so what did we get? Uh, so we didn't remove any zero variance things because there's none in there. We centered and scaled for season, episode, Andy, Angela, Daryl, Dwight, Jim, all the characters, and then all the directors and um, and writers of the office that I have in here. So we are, I think we're all pre-processed, and now we can train um, our model. Um, so let's build a spec. So this is going to be, let's call this lasso spec. So we're gonna, we're doing regression here. So let's start with uh, this for our linear regression. Um, uh, uh, spec. We are going to say penalty equals um, something. Let's just let's just define it here, and then let's say mixture equals um, one. We're doing lasso regression, so we're going to say mixture equals one. If we wanted to do um, ridge regression or elastic net, we would put a different value in there. But we want we're doing lasso, so we're going to say mixture equals one, and then we're going to say set engine equals glimnet. 
So um, if we, uh, this is how we set up a lasso spec is, is like this. So if we, um, we've used um, this linear reg function in different ways. Um, and so it, these functions are meant to be um, composable and you use them um, to, uh, in different ways, depending on what you want to do. Now I'm going to use a function we haven't used before, and that's called a workflow. Um, a workflow is um, is a, these are convenience functions um, to set up your modeling workflow, as I'm sure you can tell from what it's called, and it's basically um, to help you put together all the pieces of your models, like like Lego blocks. So it's like these things fit together here. Now I can carry it around in an easier way in my analysis. And so for example, I could, I can add a model. I can add a model to uh, my workflow. Like I, I can add lasso spec and now I have, um, now let's put that down. So I have, um, so before, so workflow by itself has a, has a recipe but no model and if I add the model to it now it has a model and it has a recipe and a model so um, there it's very convenient for um, um, uh, setting up uh, uh, setting up modular analyses so let's and you can fit and you can fit a workflow so let's um, uh, yeah let's do that thing I just did add the spec to it and then we fit it with some data the data we're gonna fit is that training um, actually I don't think I have to even I think I can just give it the training data because it knows about the recipe so I say lasso fit like this and lasso fit the result is here so um, yeah so the the beautiful thing about workflows is it knows about recipes so you don't have to like juice um, or whatever to get out the train data and knows about all of that already which is fantastic um, so but now this lasso fit thing what is it it's a workflow. It's when you fit a workflow, you get a workflow. So you're like, oh no, what do I do? Um, there are functions for getting out the things that you want. So in this case, let's say we want the fit. We want the actual fit. We pull out the fit. And then say you wanted to tidy it um, because you're interested in um, uh, the, the results here. So here, here that you can do that. You can, and you can get out all the other pieces, however things you want. So here it looks like, um, uh, for this, uh, result. So when you, these, you know, these first results are like the really, really regularized bits. And, um, the first thing to, uh, have an impact is, is Jim and then Jim and Michael. So, um, when, um, uh, when, when you have a ton of, when you use a ton of regularization, um, at this, at this penalty, when you start here, when the more you have Jim speaking and Michael speaking, um, the higher the IMDB ratings are. So that is how you train one lasso model. Um, but how do we, um, figure out how to pick that penalty, um, that penalty value. The answer is um, resampling. Uh, we, we use resampling to figure out how to, um, how to, uh, how, what, what value to use there. Uh, so resampling and tuning. So uh, let's, uh, let's build a, a set of resamples. Um, let's do, let's make a set of bootstraps. So we've got our training data, uh, training data. Um, let's stratify by season again. And let's make a set of bootstraps here. Okay, so what do we get after we do this? We get, um, we get a set of 25 bootstraps. Um, they're of these very small, <laughs> of this very small data set, and we can um, we can now um, we can now tune this. So we're going to use this same workflow here that has a recipe, but instead of the lasso spec, 
we are going to build, um, I'm, I'm just going to taint chain it a little bit. I'm going to call it tune spec. And instead of setting the penalty, I'm going to tune it. I'm going to tune the penalty here uh, so that we can use our resampling to find the right value for this data set. Um, so how do I know what to do um, uh, for this? Uh, often when we've used grids, uh, before we just say, hey, just give me 10 things. For um, uh, regularization like this, um, we, we, yeah, that doesn't work gr great. We, wanna, we want to um, space it a little differently. So we can, we, so in tidy models, we have functions to help you space it like in tons of different ways. Um, and, and here's one for um, penalty in, regu in regularization for regularization. So the way that you set this up is you make a little you make a little grid. So there's functions for all kinds of grids. I'm just going to have um, a regular grid. Just regular, nothing fancy. And I, I put in um, penalty here. So that's that function that I just uh, showed you over there. And how many of these do I want? Um, let's do 50. And let's call this my lambda grid. I think that's what people usually call it in um, Glimnet. Uh, so that's going to be my um, grid. Uh, let's um, let's set this up. I mean, this is a not a big data set, but let's set up um, let's set up parallel processing. So it uses all my cores, and let's set a seed here, and then let's do my grid. Let's set up our grid. Like so. Okay, so first we're going to tune the, a workflow. So we start with the workflow that had the um, uh, recipe in it, and we're going to add the model spec. And our model spec that we're going to add is tune spec. And then what are we going to, what data are we going to train it on? Uh, we are going to train it on the, um, the bootstrap free samples. And then what grid are we going to use? We are going to use this lambda grid that I made like this. And let's, um, uh, let's not forget to save this as something. And let's go with that. So this is going to, for each of the sets of resamples, train the lasso um, model. So let's look at it here. So we have metrics there. So let's go down here and see what we get. So for the grid, let's collect the metrics like so. So for every, so now we've got um, our MSC and our squared for each of the metrics. And we've got this for all the values of the penalty that we tried. So let's make a visualization of this. So on the x-axis, let's put that penalty. And on the y-axis, we're going to put the mean value there. Let's make color equals metric, like so. And um, let's do geom line. Um, we don't need that legend. And let's, um, there's going to be two of these. And we want them on separate facets. So let's do facet wrap metric like that. So let's look at this. All right. Okay. So this was um, this was we did this was on a on a log scale. So let's look at it like so. Nice. And let's make the scales equal free here because these are on very different scales. And what else should we do here? I might like to look at these on top of each other and row equals two like that. Um, and what else should we do? Let's make the this line a little bit heavier. And um, <clears throat> something else here. Remember, we don't just have uh, we don't just have the mean. Uh, we don't just have the mean. We also have, you know, we also have uh, information about the spread of the um, the metrics for each of these things that we made. So let's go up here and underneath the line, let's put error bars. 
Okay, so let's see. So we need a y min and a y max. So the y min is going to be the mean minus the standard error. And the y max is going to be the mean plus the standard error, like that. Um, nice, very nice. This is making me happy. Let's make that kind of transparent and um, let's get rid of the theme, alt I mean the legend altogether. Legend, I'm just using the color to highlight that, not so you can see them easier. Great, that's looking so nice. So you can see, we can look at this visualization and we can see um, the impact of regularization on um, the different values for regularization on the mean squared error. And we can see where mean squared error is best. So this helps us visually see where, which model, which model is best. It's one of these, you know, like the, these are the error, the models that we want to use, the values for the regularization um, parameters that we want to use. So how do we get those? Um, there are a couple of uh, functions in uh, Tune that let us get those. So we can say, so select, um, so there's select by, um, uh, so select by one standard error, by select by percent loss. Um, so these help you find like slightly more conservative models, like simpler models. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna say select best. Um, so you, uh, you, can, you can find, um, you can find uh, the, <clears throat> the, the, you know, try to get at the bottom or try to go to like a slightly simpler model up here um, if you would, wh whatever is better for your purposes. So this is what I'm gonna show how to do here is just to how to find the best one. So I'm saying maximize equals false because um, I don't want the, I want the lowest RMSE, not the highest RMSE. So this is the value for the penalty here, here, so that is the, what I want there. So let's call that um, lowest RMSE and save it there. And now um, I can do something called finalize workflow. There's also finalize model, other finalizations you can do. So I'm going to do, uh, let's do the same, the same workflow here. So I'm going to say take this workflow and finalize it for me, meaning um, uh, give, give me, here, here's the, here's the thing, I tuned it, here's the result, here's the thing I want to, um, uh, the result, here's the thing I want, at the end, I decided I want to use, finalize this for me, and I'm going to call this, whoops, final lasso, like so, and, um, I get a result here, so this is final lasso, it is a um, workflow, so if I wanted, I could, you know, pull, pull workflow fit and tidy it like that. Whoops, oh, I didn't fit it. Well, I would have to fit it first, so let's do that. Um, final lasso um, fit, let's train it on, let's fit it on the training data. Um, like that, good. And now let's do what I was just saying. Fi pull workflow fit like this. Oh, and now that's a fit. And you know what? Let's let's next thing. Let's um, let's look at variable importance. I think that'll probably be the not nice last thing to do here. So let's do this and then we can pipe it straight to the variable importance function from the VIP package. And we're gonna say lambda equals um, this, this thing. So uh, this, this value right here. This is the thing that we're looking for like this. Um, so let's run that. There we go. And so this gives us for each variable that we had in here, how many 
Uh, how many lines did Jim have? Was Greg Daniels a director or writer? How many lines did Michael have? Was the episode later in the season or earlier? How important is it? And it, is it positive or negative? Okay, and now um, uh, let's uh, let us call this. Um, um, I'm going to take the absolute value of the importance. And I am going to reorder that variable. I'm going to say fact underscore reorder variable and importance like this because I'm about to make a plot. Okay, great. And let's so GG plot. So we're going to say um, import, so let's say. Um, x equals importance, y equals variable. Notice that this is nice. This is the new um, this is the new uh, ggplot2, and you can just you can just do this now, and you don't have to do like chord flip and stuff. It's pretty sweet. Um, geom call like this, and we can see. Oh, this is nice. We're just gonna clean it up a smidge. Um, I don't, uh, let's get rid of on the, that space, expand, see, that space there, and we don't need that, let's get rid of labs, labs, y equals null, there we go, um, whoops, discrete, Oh yeah, that's the X, sorry. I'm so used to cord flipping. It's gonna take me a minute to get used to not cord flipping. All right, so let's zoom here so you can take a nice look at this. So this is from the variable importance package. Uh, Re-render, you can do it. Um, uh, uh, so this is this tells us the variable importance for this uh, Glimnet model, for this regular, this lasso model. The, um, it's having a trouble re-rendering here for me. There we, there it goes. Okay, um, so uh, the how many lines Jim speaks is uh, the most important thing in the IMDb ratings according to this model that I trained. Whether Greg Daniels, uh, which is who's the show creator, um, was involved in, in the writing or, or directing is the second most important thing. Um, uh, the the show then Michael's lines. Um, the episodes that are at the end of the season um, are ha are more highly rated. Whether B. Joe Novak was involved. So these are oh Kelly's lines. This is this is deeply sad to me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just gonna delete this whole thing and not show it. <laughs> I don't know about this anymore. Uh, I'm xing this plot out. I'm sad. Okay. Um, all right. So um, the last thing we might want to do is um, check our our um, how we, how this model performs on the test data. Uh, just as a reminder, let's um, remind ourselves how our uh, our model was performing on in terms of RMSC and R squared on the um, on the training data. We see values about like this. Um, there is actually like a very nice um, function to just if you've got a workflow um, like the like this like that has been fit like the so final lasso. So this is a this is like a finalized. Um, final workflow and you've got a split that has test data in it so notice that this isn't fit yet um, but it's like a final final model and this is a split um, last fit um, will do that all for you it's it's pretty convenient it's like you don't have to go through and mutate um, uh, you know, truth equals blah, 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 and fit and all that. It just takes it all and it's, it's pretty darn convenient. And then we can uh, collect the metrics like so. And we can see and kind of look and see um, what we get. And that is somewhat different. That might be worth digging into and understanding why we have some differences there, but um, that, that's good to know. So um, that's what we get here at the end, and um, great for, uh, thanks so much for looking through that all with me. All right.
right, uh, we did it. We used lasso regression to um, to learn uh, which to predict which um, episodes um, of the office of the office had higher IMDb ratings. We figured out which characteristics, um, which characters speaking more, which uh, writers and directors um, are associated with higher IMDb ratings, and we used um, the tidy model tooling to do this, including um, recipes and workflows and some of the functions from Tune to understand um, how we can um, how we can learn, for example, how much regularization to use in la with the lasso and um, uh, and then how to choose the best one at the end. So I hope this was helpful and I will see you next time.